In this video, we will be looking at the Green Line, or Line 1, of Montreal's Metro. As the line has 27 stations, this video is split in two, with the previous video covering stations from Anguignon to Saint Laurent, and the current video continuing from berry cam to Honoré Beaugrand. If you have not already, we invite you to watch part 1 before viewing this video. Let us look at the stations of the Green Line. Station Berry Ucam is the main transfer station of the Montreal Metro, serving all of the original three metro lines, green, orange and yellow. The station was originally called Berry de Montsigny, as it was at the corner of Berry and de Montsigny streets. However, on January 1st, 1988, as the Université de Montréal station was about to get inaugurated on the Blue Line, all major universities that did not have their name integrated with the station leading to its campus had them added, and Berry de Montsigny became Berry Ucam. The station has three levels of platforms, with the orange line located one level down from the mezzanine, the green line perpendicular underneath, and finally the yellow line located even deeper and a block away. The inside of the station is grandiose in the sense that it is so big. You can feel this as soon as you enter from the vast entrance on the Rue Berry and St. Catherine. On the main floor, there are a few stores which included for many years the library Le Parchemin. In recent years, this longtime staple was replaced by Ucam Library. There is also the customer service center of the STM, as well as a few convenience stores located around the station. There are several points of interest around the station, including Gare d'Autocar de Montréal, which is the intercity bus terminal, the Université de Québec à Montréal, UCAM, Place du Puy Shopping Centre, l'Hôtel des Gouverneurs, Place Emily Gamelin Square, Théâtre Saint-Denis and M. Telus, formerly known as the Metropolis Performing Arts Centre. The station has five entrances and has indoor connections to the UCAM campus. In addition to metro transfers, passengers can transfer to intercity buses and the 747 STM bus route, among others. The station, which was where the metro inauguration took place back in 1966, is the biggest of the network, and the only one serving three lines. The main art attraction in the station is the glass mural over the tunnel leading to Anneri Bogna on the Green Line. It was made by Pierre Gaborio and Pierre Osterath, and is called Hommage au Fondateur de la Ville de Montréal. It was installed in 1969 after it was given by the Caisse Populaire des Jardins. The other main pieces of art are paintings by Robert Lapalme that are over the stairs leading to the yellow line for Expo 67. Station Baudry. It was named for Baudry Street, which itself was named for Pierre Baudry, who owned the land that the street passed over. Over the last 20 years, there have been people in the LGBTQ community who have expressed their wish to change the name to Baudry Le Village because of the importance the village has gained in Montreal. The station building has integrated the colors of the rainbow by having a pillar in each of those colors above the only entrance, 1255 St. Catherine Est, which has similar windows and design as Berry Cam's main entrance. Since many of the businesses around it also have either the rainbow flag or the colors somewhere on their facade, the station fits right in with them. As opposed to its neighbor station, Berry, this is one of the smallest as far as the overall volume is concerned. The side platforms are not deep and the ceiling is low, as well as a low overpass like Atwater. The walls are mostly beige and light brown. The station is only one ticket hall with four turnstiles next to it. The most unique aspect of Baudry is the moving sidewalk, which is sloped and not flat. It brings people from the mezzanine to the overpass, a distance of one city block from the entrance. It is unique in the network. It was featured in the movie C'était en tour de Laura Cadier, where the star character of the movie, played by Ginette Renault, is afraid to go on it. They were chosen as the slope was insufficient to use regular escalators. The points of interest around the station are mostly related to the village. There is Cabaret Mado, where the world-famous drag queen Mado Lamotte performs, Club Unity, Campus Club, as well as many convenience stores, restaurants, barber shops, and other businesses. It is also the station to use to go to Montreal's two biggest TV studios, Radio Canada and TVA. Station Papineau. 
Papineau received its name from nearby Avenue Papineau, which was named for Joseph Papineau, a notary, surveyor, politician, and defender of the rights of the people and the French language. The exterior features one entrance building, which was rebuilt in 1999. Inside, there is a convenience store just before the fair gates. Immediately after the fair gates are the first set of escalators and stairs to the mezzanine level. Halfway down, you reach a mid-level and switch to the second set of escalators or stairs to continue the descent. Once at the mezzanine, several large murals can be viewed. The corridors and platforms are decorated with beige tiles and occasional brown, green or white tile accents. From the mezzanine, there is an overhead walkway to cross the tracks to reach the other platform. Papineau Station features three murals on the mezzanine level, created by Jean Cartier and Georges Duraz. They are entitled Les Patriotes de 1837 à 1838. They tell the story of the Patriots' Rebellion and commemorate Louis-Joseph Papineau, the son of Joseph Papineau, the station's namesake. At the platform level, the wall decor and floors follow what came before in the mezzanine and provide views back up to the overhead walkway. Station Frontenac Although Frontenac was part of the original Green Line when the metro opened in 1966, this station opened two months later than the initial system. It would then serve as the western terminus of the Green Line until 1976 when the line was extended to its current terminus at Honoré Beaugrain. The station has a simple layout and aesthetic. From inside the entrance, there is a convenience store and fair gates. The escalators and stairs are found immediately beyond the gates. Like neighboring Papineau Station, the trip down to the mezzanine level is completed via several escalators. Once there, the layout is rather simple. The corridor branches off into an overhead walkway with stairs on both sides to reach the platforms. The overall look of the lower levels of the station is rather flat and monotonous. Beige, white and greys color the floor and walls of the mezzanine and platforms. The platforms received some new modular paneling that contains small tiling consisting of various beige grey tones to give some texture to the deep platforms. This station is unique in how flat and monotonous it becomes at the mezzanine and platform levels. There is also no public artwork to highlight at this station either. Station Préfontaine The station received its name due to it being partly underneath Parc Raymond Préfontaine. The station has very colorful entrance buildings located on opposite sides of Rue Hochelaga. The entrances have a very geometric shape with lots of angles and corners and are decorated in multiple colors. They feature plenty of glass windows and the Metro Aero logo is also featured as a directional aid to the doors. Once inside, the main mezzanine area is covered by a glass roof supported by long red steel trusses. The natural light in this area is very abundant, creating a cheerful and welcoming space. After passing through the fair gates, the accesses to the platforms are located on either side and are cleverly marked by more metro arrows. This is also repeated on the platform level to point to the stairs to reach the mezzanine. Continuing down to the platforms, they receive natural light in the central section, while the rest is illuminated with artificial light. The station itself is a work of art, from the geometric shapes and colors found outside at the entrances to the interior of the mezzanine and beyond. In addition, the way the light casts its rays along the floor and walls throughout the day can be quite stunning and is easily seen by passengers on trains passing through the station. Station Joliette The station has two entrances, located on either side of Rue Hochelaga. Once inside either entrance, a short descent to the mezzanine level rejoins both entrances and presents the fair gates in the middle of the space, along with the convenience store. The ceiling in this area is arched and rounded. After passing through the fair gates, the art piece of the station is easily seen and was created by Marcel Rabi. It is a collection of colorful backlit glass designs that represent the planets of the solar system, with planet Earth located in the middle. The mere finished stainless steel around the planets reflects the image of passengers and represents the unity of the planets and human beings in the universe. Stairs are located on each side and reach the platforms below. The platforms are built in a tunneled section of the station, resulting in a low ceiling. The platforms are decorated with unique yellow brick tiling on the walls and red seats. 
Jodiette is a rather simple station to navigate and pass through, thanks to its bright colors and lively spaces. A unique feature of Joliet Station is how both entrances' interiors are mirror images of each other and meet up together on the mezzanine level. Station P9 The station has two entrances. The eastern one is very original, as its shape is more circular than square, which can make a parallel with the attached Olympic Stadium's oval. As soon as you enter, you can still feel the circular shape, from the ceiling with all its lights installed in a circular pattern through to the stairs which are outlined by a circular wall. The concourse is one of the biggest in the network, to accommodate the large crowds of the Olympic Stadium, which hosted the 1976 Olympics as well as the Montreal Expos. It is in all various shades of brown, with the floor featuring circular shapes. To accommodate the large crowds during major events, the station has many turnstiles for easy entry and exit. On the wall of the Anguignon platform, you can see the five Olympic rings that were sculpted in bronze. There also used to be logos of the Montreal Expos Major League Baseball team when they were in existence. Popular points of interest around the station in addition to the stadium are the Montreal Botanical Garden, the Montreal Insectarium, the stadium's eastern esplanade also hosts various outdoor events throughout the year. Jody Bonnet did a large mural in the mezzanine. It is called Sidious Altius Fortius and is made of concrete and aluminum. PNF is also the only station that has extra tracks located just before it to park trains that can leave quickly when events end. This is a concept similar to the Mets Willets Point Station in New York. As soon as the Expo's game would end, trains would depart the station heading for downtown. Station Vio. The station is located at the eastern end of the Olympic Park in Montreal. It is quite a popular station due to the many tourist attractions located in proximity, which include the Olympic Stadium and Tower, the Montreal Biodome, the Montreal Planetarium, the Stade Saputo Soccer Stadium, and a movie theater, among others. The mezzanine level is quite spacious, allowing for the easy flow of passengers into and out of the station and features a convenience store near the single entrance. The station is relatively shallow in depth, with the tracks and platforms located only one flight of stairs below the mezzanine level. It is a bright station with lots of windows and several skylights, some of which bring natural light into the lower platform area. The platform level is accessed via stairs and elevators at the eastern end of the station. The station's simple layout combined with the abundant natural light entering the mezzanine and the light shaft for the platforms makes it a cheerful station to visit. When exiting, Passengers are treated to fantastic side profile views of the Olympic Stadium's inclined tower in the near distance. The main public artwork at Vio Station is on the eastern wall of the mezzanine level. It is a ceramic mural entitled Opus 74, which was created by artist Jean Paul Mousseau. It is a non figurative representation of the Montreal Tower and the Olympic Stadium and Olympic Flame. Station Assomption. This station is accessed through the sole entrance building on Boulevard de l'Assomption. Once inside, passengers loop around the upper level to reach the top of the stairs to descend to the mid-level. From there, a short corridor leads to the next set of escalators to reach the mezzanine. This area has a tall sweeping and vaulting ceiling, accentuating the depth and size of the underground station. Passing through the fare gates, there is a small convenience store located on one side. The access to the platforms is from either side, but it was constructed asymmetrically and diagonally, helping to differentiate the two platforms from one another. At the platform level, red tiled squares make up the sidewalls. The most unique feature is the asymmetrical access and design linking the mezzanine to the platform level. One stair is located at the end of the mezzanine, while the other is offset back and passes underneath the edge of the mezzanine. There are several colorful murals found in the entrance and corridors of the station that were created by Guy Montpetit. Station Kedziak. Kedziak Station has two entrances, both in small square gray buildings, which are classy and have a somber appearance. Both entrance buildings are symmetrical, and so is the route from them to the ticket booth. Once entered, you find a vast concourse that joins both entrances to the ticket area. The mezzanine has two murals by Jean Cartier, one on each side. One side is in tones of green, while the other one is in tones of orange. 
the mezzanine flows over and descends to the platforms on both sides of the station volume. As part of the platform is covered by the mezzanine above, it creates a smaller feeling space in that portion that contrasts with the opposite end, which is very open and has a high ceiling. Points of interest include Sanctuaire Marie-Reine des Coeurs and École Secondaire Édouard Montpetit. Station L'Angelier. The station has three entrances, each at one of the three corners of an intersection. They all share a beautiful somber square design in tones of granite. Only the lights and Metro logo are added to the exterior. The mezzanine is in the form of an arch, which reminds us of most Washington DC Metro stations. When you add the lights on the ceiling, it adds an element design unique to this station. The stairs leading to the side platforms are beautifully designed, and a stainless steel handrail visible from the platform matches the stainless steel that is present all around the platforms. Most notably, the circular cutout sculptural panels made by Charles Dodelin. The overall visual aesthetic always goes back to the stainless steel paneling of Charles Dodelin, which are classic yet original, with each one having a different color inside the opening. There are a few points of interest around the station, with the most well known being the mall Centre Domaine. Station Radisson. The station has two entrances, which are relatively small and have most of their surface covered with windows. The locations in which they are found are relatively quiet as compared to other metro entrances. Once you enter the northern entrance, it has some stairs that lead to a corridor that bring you to the concourse, which is just next to the southern entry. A convenience store is located just before the turnstiles. Once you pass the turnstiles, you descend escalators that reach the overpass. All these elements are suspended in a massive station volume. Approaching the bottom, you are given one of the best views of the tracks. The view from the side platforms is magnificent. The benches are red, and if you look up, you can see the escalators and the lights, which are black lampshades suspended from the ceiling. Ironically, one of the most beautiful stations of the network doesn't have a dedicated art piece. Yet the architecture of the station itself, made by Papineau, Gérin Lajoie, Leblanc and Edwards, is a work of art. It certainly has a futuristic, almost space mountain feeling from the lighting in the passageways to the sweeping and rounded tapered ceiling by the platforms. The points of interest are Place Versailles Mall as well as the Institut Universitaire en Santé Mentale de Montréal. Fun fact, the station was featured along with Lionel Gru in the movie The Jackal, where the station was dressed to pass for the Capitol Heights station in Washington, D.C. Station Honoré Beaugrain, Terminus. Honoré Beaugrain has been the eastern terminus of the line since it opened in 1976, replacing the former terminus at Frontenac. The station features three entrances, two of which reach large bus loops that serve many routes from the east end of the island. Once inside the station, the sprawling mezzanine area quickly comes into view. It features several retail outlets such as coffee shops and convenience stores. Natural light also enters this area through several small skylights in the ceiling. A large and wide fair gate area is located at the western end of the mezzanine and leads to the platforms below. Just before the stairs to reach the platforms, a nice blue tinted glass window overlooks the center of the tracks. As the station is a terminus, the platform to the left is for arriving passengers disembarking the train, while departing passengers head towards the right side for trains destined for Angrignon. The main artwork is a pair of ceramic murals found on both sides of the station. They were created by Jean-Paul Mousseau and form two abstract and symmetrical murals. The predominantly blue mural on the south wall is repeated on the north wall in red. Together they are stunning and colorful and successfully add lots of character and life to the station. The platforms themselves are large and expansive and the walls step closer together when approaching the far end. Large skylights also help draw in more natural light into the space, ensuring a nice, pleasant and warm environment to wait and board the next train. The beautiful artwork combined with the natural light from the skylights and the blue tinted windows all come together nicely to give Honoré Beaugrand Station a unique and inviting character to experience and discover. And there you have it, the green line of the Montreal Metro. 
27 stations, 22.1 kilometers in length. Thank you for watching. Learn more about the Montreal Metro by visiting our website at metro.railfans.ca. Be sure to subscribe to Railfans Canada so you do not miss our future content. Merci d'avoir voyagé avec Railfans Canada. Bonne journée.